So we are live. Hello, everybody. I'm Katie. I'm the founder of Flexible Working People. Delighted to be here tonight with you and very excited to have a wonderful get ahead partner, Rebecca Newenham, who is sporting a fabulous new haircut for anyone who notices. I just said to Katie, I look like I've got a helmet, so I've got to get used to this hairstyle now. So. Which made me chuckle Thanks. a lot just as we were going live. Oh. Anyway, um, I'm going to start. So people are starting to join, which is lovely. So if anyone joining, please give us a little thumbs up. Let us know that you're here. Um, we've had a really good um, sign up. So lots of people have signed up for this. So we're hoping to have lots of you watching. If you're watching live, can you just type hello and live? And if you're watching on replay, maybe just type replay because we know that we get a lot of people watching on replay. We'd really like this to be a bit more interactive. We're going to natter on about how we set up our businesses. And um, and normally we sort of talk and we love, but we love questions. So if you've got questions for us, then this session tonight is going to be quite different to usual because we're just sort of going to talk about, you know, how we came about setting up our businesses, um, what it meant to us, um, you know, the hard bits, not just the glossy bits, what were the tough bits and the challenges and any tips that we've got, etc. Because setting up a business can be really scary. And we know that there's lots of people in the Flexible Working People Facebook group and in our wider community that want to find flexibility and they can't find it in employment. They're tired of working for somebody else. And, you know, there's this real desire to set up their own business. Um, but it's tough to know sort of where to start with setting up your own business, what are the pitfalls, what do you need to think about, etc. And actually, um, Rebecca is also going to talk about Get Ahead, the opportunity, because she helps plenty of wonderful women set up their own businesses and be supported. So we're going to talk about that too. So Rebecca, you're a business owner, you're a mentor, a franchise consultant and a flexible working champion. And you had a really successful career in corporate buying and before you set up this award-winning consultancy outsourcing agency.
I'm back. And we're still live. I've had a few messages yeah. <laughs> well okay. done. right I'm so sorry everybody um I hope people are rejoining oh there we go we've got a couple more um sorry Rebecca I don't know you can't make this up we're recording it anyway aren't you so we are recording it it just probably would have been better to have started it again but I'll edit it I'll try and edit it so I can put an edited version Good. back up Good idea. Okay. Hello again, Rebecca. Let's just, we just dive, dive straight yeah. in now. Yeah. Okay. So for anyone who is joining us again, sorry, we had some massive, I had some massive technical issues and everything went down in the house, so, but we're back and we, and we are recording this. So if you're watching this on replay, hello, we're starting to get some people watching. So Rebecca and I um, are going to talk to you a little bit about how we set up our businesses and the back on our backstory. So Rebecca, why don't you start and then I can stop floundering yeah. with <laughs> you tell us a little bit about how you came about sort of leaving the corporate world and yes. setting up your business. No, 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 absolutely good idea. So um I was a retail bar, like Katie said, and my last job was for Sainsbury's, and they at the time were offering career break options. So when I had my first daughter, who's now 22, I took that career break option. And then I happened to get pregnant again and subsequently went on to have two more daughters. So for me, I had the support of my husband and we decided actually I would take a career break and just see where that led me. And it was during that career break I did um, counselling certificates. I was you know, classic PTA mummy chair at preschool and things. So I didn't not do anything. And we had a couple of properties I rented out. So I felt like I had a purpose aside from looking after the girls, but I also took that time to think, like, what do I want to do next? And I think that's a question I hear a lot from people, and I imagine you're the same, case, Shelley, when you get to that crossroads, and it's almost a privilege to be able to think, well, what do I do next? And I think I realised quite early on that I didn't have to go back into that corporate life if I didn't want to. And I was lucky enough to be in that position, but I think deep down, even in that corporate role, I never felt I was at, in my home, if you know what I mean. I never really yeah. felt this was where I wanted to feel and this is where I want to end up. Yes, exactly. And that led to questions. And my mum, and Katie's heard this a number of times, my mum was self-employed. She ran a tutorial agency when I was growing up. So I had witnessed firsthand somebody that gave me her full attention by running something aside to us. And she would often do lots of calls and things in the evening. So I knew there were other things out there. That, that That's interesting. That. My mum also ran her own business from the kitchen cupboard. And she, um, she did property, mm -hmm. and I don't really know exactly, but she's always she was always in property, and she used to come home from school, and she'd literally open the cupboard, and all her sort of papers would fall out, and she'd, she'd <laughs> the desk set up. But she always did really well working from home, and she was always a really good role model for the fact that actually you could do your own thing. Yeah. I hadn't really thought about it, but actually. I think seeing a parent doing that, I think when I, look, I was talking to my child today, my son, and I said, would you like to run my business when I'm older? And he said, no, I wouldn't, but <laughs> I would like to run my own business. Uh -huh. yes, so seeing, mm -hmm. yeah, seeing somebody, you know, in your family doing their own thing and earning their own money. And I said, I think that's a really good idea. You should, you know, you shouldn't work for someone else. You should be your own boss. So what did you do? Tell us how you came from sort of that yes. to this. Yes, so I did a lot of research. So I remember looking at what things I could do from home. And the term virtual assistant was sort of hitting over here a little bit. It was 10 years ahead in the state. So I thought, actually, that sounds interesting. Always knowing. And, and I did always from a very early age or early stage. No, I wanted it to be more than just me, this business. I knew I didn't want to work on my own. I knew I wanted a brand. And I think that's the difference when a lot of people I've met said, oh, I had no idea where I was going with this. Well, actually, I always had a vision. And I think that kind of came back from my retail buying days of creating brands, own label brands for the supermarkets and things, understanding what customers wanted. And I was replicating that by creating my own brand. We would get ahead. Then it was your virtual assistant. And we're now your virtual agency. And that's just become my brand. I didn't want it built around my very complicated surname. I didn't want to make it too personal which is interesting. Well, I think yeah. it's really different wouldn't you, that you didn't really have a, a sense of where flexible working people would go, let alone be the No, and I think, no, not at all. So I, similarly to you, 
I left my corporate job. I took redundancy. And then I had Jessica, my eldest, who was who's now 12. So that was 12 years ago. But it took me at least four or five years because I only set up flexible working people five years ago. So in between sort of ending that and then floundering for a number of years while I was consulting and doing various part time jobs that didn't really fulfill me. You know, I never really thought I wanted my own business. I sort of fell into it um, in the sense that I set up the Facebook group. I was really passionate about helping other people like me and it, and it just sort of rolled. And I was saying to you just before that you don't always have to intentionally set up a new a business. Sometimes these side hustles that we have or passion projects or whatever you want to call them can lead you. And in some ways, that's easier as a decision than sitting in a job. And I know that so many people in our community sort of sit in jobs and think, oh, what could I do? You know, what if I yes. if I want yes. to do it? And it feels like a much bigger risk almost to mm. leave employment, to set up a business. And then sort of what would that business look like? And yeah, you can I think, it, can't you? And I think what you said, that passion you can't fake passion, can you? And I think that's the difference. It's you've got it in you. It's where you get your energy and what drives you. And if you're having to fake something or make something that doesn't really fit with you, that's when it can fall down, I think. Yes. So it's interesting because you always wanted your own brand and that's what you've yes. developed. Yeah. Yes. And, you've, and you're very heavy on brands. I guess ahead's a really I strong brand you. identity. And the different. whole business is yeah. based mm. on your brand. Really. Yeah, no, well, and I think that that's been intentional from the beginning. And I've worked with a number of fab brand managers. One of mine, Kate's been with me since I, she's a family friend and she designed my wedding invitation. So she's been part of my world for a long time. And I think that's what I've loved doing is bringing people in as and when I need them. And I've never been shy to do that. And I think that's okay. another, sometimes you hear people and some of our clients are you know, super protective of their business and it's their baby and, and no one else could really get involved. And that's where we come in and go, actually, yes, they can. And I think I've almost, to my detriment, sometimes almost given everything away to other people to support me because I know what I enjoy doing and what I don't. And that okay. comes with us then. Mm. So I would say then there's, there's bit, you know, we, we've sort of gone from A to Z and actually there was that middle bit or that beginning bit where, you know, you weren't get ahead with the, the glossy brand and, you know, the AC virtual experts that you outsource to and this sort of model that you've set up. So what was the bit, where were, where were the sticky bits for you? What did yes. you find challenging on your journey? Juggling my girls. I remember having to ask friends if they could go to them for if I was doing a networking meeting or hosting a meeting early on. I remember I used to hate standing up in, in I say in public, you know, doing presentations at school. I couldn't bear it. And then I remember someone saying, well, if you're going to launch your business, you've got to go networking. And I remember thinking, well, how am I going to stand up in front of people without going bright red? And that was a big sticking point for me. And it wasn't until I actually started doing it and then suddenly realised, well, I'm talking about something I know all about. So it's not like an awful project at school where you, you get not really sure and you think someone's going to catch you out. So I think that for me was a big thing. But the juggle has always been like that. And, you know, fast forward now, my girls don't need me in that same way, but they need me in, in other ways. You know, one of them FaceTime yeah. me before we came on live. And I was like, go away. But, you know, that they need you even more, but just slightly differently. But I think it was the juggling and fitting things in and constantly looking at my watch at the very early stage and, and questioning whether I was doing the right thing. Yeah. Whatever I was doing. And that's always hard, I think, when you're first. So I definitely had that. Um, but I think also running your own business means that you inevitably have to wear 28 hats and you can't be good at everything. And no, if you think, yeah, no, and people have an expectation of you, don't they? I think sometimes that you should be. And you should be able to do everything. Like, Excel, I can't say. So, exactly. So I'm really shocking at maths and Excel spreadsheets. I hate them. Yes, I have to run a business plan and forecast. And so things like that really trip me up. No, 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 um, absolutely. And that's where I've always, and I laughed with you earlier, saying I wouldn't be married or have any friends if I hadn't had mentors and coaches that have come into my life as I need them. And some yes. of them have been quite expensive. I remember early, early on, thinking, oh, I've got to pay, what, £150 an hour for this coaching session. It's, it was a huge amount, but actually it was what then enabled me to move up to the next sort of rung of where I needed the business to be. So, it's, so I that's think that's a really, really interesting point. And I was talking about that this earlier to um, Rachel, actually, who's a coach. 
And I was saying that we all really struggle sometimes to invest in ourselves. And whether it's investing in coaching or investing in, you know, business support or outsourcing, because sometimes, you know, I think, oh, I'll just do it myself. Yes. Um, rather than yeah. Outsource. I mean, you, your whole business is based on an outsourcing model, but actually freeing up my time by outsourcing someone else who can do it better and faster, which means I can concentrate on parts of the business that I need to concentrate on. So it's sort of do what you do best and outsource the rest strategy yeah, no, no, um, absolutely. yeah has been a really really key part of my growth because I think holding on to everything for a long time and not outsourcing it thinking that I can do everything um, <laughs> you can't you can't grow that way so as a business owner I say you know part of this is you know are you cut out for your own business it's like it's, are you cut out to run your own business there's all these different aspects and dimensions to running a business oh, absolutely. And from, from the very beginning is it and it's that whole you, know, you need a website you need certain things and I think sometimes yeah you do need to trust and it's been lovely for me to watch you Katie you know now you're working with Carrie and you've got additional support everything you've it feels like you're doing the things that you should be doing and exactly that, and actually since I've got the additional support the business is running more smoothly things are happening when they should happen and you know and, and etc so what yeah. advice would you give then to somebody considering setting up on their own what would your top tips be uh i think one of them would definitely be get some support and mentoring there's lots of free resources out there you know i've, I've been a mentor for virgin startup so look at what support you can get in your local area networking has been amazing for me so look at what networking opportunities there are because that's where you find your community and your like-minded buddies that you can can chat to aside from your sort of general friendships at the very very beginning i would say really make sure what you're offering that there is an appetite for it sound people out and i don't know about you katie but remember when i set get it up i told a lot of my friends and family about it and they were my biggest cheerleaders from the beginning because they would they wanted to support me so actually my first ever clients came from a couple of my really good friends from the fellow mums at school so don't be afraid to talk to people i think that's the thing you know when we say networking it's such a sounds like such a hard thing to do but actually your network really is just the people around you and the people in different, different ways yeah. no and absolutely all sorts of different guises and when i set up the same uh, people were really supportive of what i was doing and wanted to get behind me and actually even now so many of my clients are people I know not because I knock on their door and network but because they know what I do and I'm passionate about what I do and you know they want to support me and what we do helps them so actually why you know they'd rather give their business to me than someone else so yeah absolutely and I think another thing I'm saying is about be consistent so when you decide what you want to do and you want to commit to, if it's a formal networking or it's how you're showing up on social media, do show up on a regular basis. Don't just do a couple of posts and then think, well, where is everyone? You know, people have got to know, and that's sort of slightly cliche, know, like, and trust you. That's yes. built up by you showing up. But it's also not just about you broadcasting what you're doing. It's about engaging with other people and building that relationship as well. Because Correct. Yeah. I agree. And I'd also say in that, totally consistency is key but also don't just think about selling your product or selling your service you know because people don't want to work with people who are just trying to sell to you the whole time boring so, yeah i'm saying you don't go to a dinner party and just go blah, 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 all about yourself you know you do have conversation don't you or if you don't then you're gonna have a problem with the building the no like and trust it's like giving stuff away free giving good advice yeah. you know people knowing that you're the go-to person it's making sure that in whatever business it is you're doing you're the you're you're the one that people want to go to because you're the trusted one yeah and not just because you're selling something it's because no, no, no. actually you're quite generous with what you yeah, give out you'll be with your friends and in your own social circle exactly thing isn't it and so I think also we talked about um, what we have in common is that we were very lucky to have been supported by, um, you know, in our situations. Yeah. When I left my job, I actually took a fairly decent um, redundancy, which allowed me and enabled me and gave me a bit of time, actually breathing space to, um, you know, think about what I wanted to do next. And also, yeah. you know, just at home, you know, I have a husband who works and he luckily for us, we were in a position where at that time, 
you know, my income wasn't the only income. So I was, you know, in a privileged position, I suppose, to be able to set up a business. And I think you said the same. And I think one of the things that can hold people back in setting up on their own is not having that security of income totally. when they need it. Um, I know I think you've the same. I'm talking to quite a few women at the moment and it's around, if you're ready to set something up on your own, look at other ways of supplementing your income while you build and scale and, and get to where you want to be. And I think that it's about being brave like that, isn't it? And, and recognising that there are other ways of making it possible. If you're driven and you've got this dream, you can achieve it, but it's about being realistic in how you get there. Yeah. So we've got a number of listeners. I'm just interested if for you to put some comments in the chat box. Like, are you thinking about setting up your own business? What are your ambitions? What's holding you back? Um, we've got quite a number of people listening. So why don't you just pop in the chat box, if you don't mind, because I think that we'd love to hear from you. Um, you know, where are you in your journey? Are you employed but desperate to not be employed? Have you just set up a business? Are you thinking about investing in yourself? If anyone could share, that would be it would be really lovely to sort of hear from you, you know, where you are in your journey. Um, so while we're waiting for people to tell us that, so you... The business that you've ended up in is Get Ahead, which is actually a business that supports people in having businesses, which is a really interesting. Okay. <laughs> in the dots. Yes. So not me. only have you set up a business, and we're talking about some of the challenges of setting up a business on your own, yeah. But actually, your model and how you work supports people in setting up their own business. So maybe just talk a little bit about the actual model and and what what yes. you do at Get Ahead and how that works. Yes, yeah, so um, we support our clients, and the clients are generally busy business owners, very much like we've just described, that are in that sense of growth and thinking, actually, I don't know if I can afford to employ someone or I want to go down that legal route. So they tap into our level of support, and we will build them a virtual team, whether it's a virtual PA, someone to do social media, marketing, PR. Yes. And um, that's just an interesting way that we support clients. And I've done that from the very beginning, bringing freelancers in to give that level of support. And that's what you mentioned earlier, Katie. We've got around 80 to 90 get ahead. We call them now virtual experts because we cover um, broader than, I say just admin, it's not just admin, but you know, broader than admin. And then I've scaled that by regional model. And that's where we've been talking over the last couple of years around empowering women to get back into the workforce that want to run something for themselves, but want something that's proven. And that's the opportunity you know, we give. So you're right, the whole 360 degree where I'm, I'm mentoring my team who are supporting clients, who are also enabling our freelancers to do work that they possibly might struggle to get themselves. And also that community piece and that's been really big for me building a community where my team feels supported they're in a safe space and they've got this comfort blanket around them and because that's often hard isn't it Katie I think people can feel quite isolated and alone and not quite sure who to trust in ask, answering a question or something so, so that's the thing that I've always loved about you know get ahead and an opportunities like this I think that setting up a business on your own is such a lonely place to be and, you know, it's not lonely for me in that I have a community, but equally running the business can be quite lonely. Whereas in your world, you know, you've talked your community is very different, very supported, very nurturing. Yeah. You know, so mm. it's a very different environment. And in terms of what people get by when they join you, you're sort of handing them the toolkit in a way to say, I've done all the thinking for you. I've done all the heart, heavy lifting and the hard yes. work. We know what this, you know, we know how this works. And, you know, so you're taking all of that. So the stuff I found really hard when I set up my business was, and still have massive struggles with, the website, you know, building the website. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Particularly because it's a recruitment engine and a jobs board. I mean, it's absolute monster. Well, absolutely. The branding, the marketing, sort of the infrastructure, the yeah. invoicing and all the accountancy part sides of it, you know. For somebody who's never had to do any of that before, because my background was purely marketing, working for a corporate where I literally yes. just sort of nod in the right direction and someone would jump up and help me. Um, you know, I was very good at um, sort of delegating. That was my favourite thing, delegating. I loved to delegate. And when you set up on your own, suddenly, you know, that delegation comes straight back to you. And oh, so... Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so 
Mm. That's why I love the get ahead model because actually the heavy lifting bit is yeah, already. I, like that. I hadn't thought that's, I'm going to have to add that to my list. But you're right. So I have done it all. And that's why when someone comes to me and says, oh, I, I have to pay to be part, part of this. It's like, well, you're paying for a proven, tested model, but also for the support and everything that's in it and the continued support. I think that's that's a, the big thing. But you're right. I like that heavy lifting because, you know, the amount I'm spending on SEO that perhaps somebody individually would have to exactly. or I'm doing that monthly, you know, the, the new website and, and blogs that come on board and infographics. You know, I have all the content and the infrastructure yeah. and all of that stuff of that course. actually somebody working with get ahead or becoming a partner doesn't actually have to think about because no. you've done all of that and you're going to take them yes exactly and yeah no it's interesting so we've got any yeah. questions so we've got from sabine i was made redundant just before christmas i'm looking for a part-time job also want to use this time to set up my own business Rebecca has been great listening and advising me. Oh, have you been in touch? Have you spoken yes, to Yes, we got with, I spoke to Sabine last week and we're chatting again tomorrow. Oh, okay. So you are both very inspiring. Okay, so thanks, Sabine. Has anyone else got anything to add? Because I know that we've got people listening. So um, are you thinking about setting up a business? Are you interested in hearing more about Get Ahead from Rebecca? Where are you on your journey? Tell us, please. Don't be shy. I won't say your name out loud if you don't want me to. Um, no. Pop a, pop a comment in the box, please, and tell us. So um, so tell us, Rebecca, let's talk a little bit more about the type of person. So you've obviously been speaking to Sabine, which is lovely. Yes. What, what sort of, what's yes. the type of person who you like, you know, who you think would be good at setting up their own business? Because we've talked so, about. Yeah, so, yeah, sorry, I'm interrupting a bit. Yeah, so in terms of situation, you're perhaps on a career break or doing a part-time job that's giving you flexibility, but you feel like you've got more to give um somebody that wants an opportunity to have something to grow and scale over the next few years and we often hear that word you know legacy but actually it's about having something that you can be proud of you're a good listener you enjoy meeting people and you love that sense of being able to connect make a connection and see other people grow and i've interviewed a couple of my partners over the last couple of months and fiona who's my longest standing partner so she's been with us for 6 years says the joy she has in seeing a client flourish because she's matched them with the perfect expert or experts makes her you know really really happy and also on the flip side giving our experts really interesting client work to do that they may struggle to get themselves is lovely as well because you see them growing in confidence which so is you a, did explain that a bit but like let's just talk about that a bit more because i think that that's the real difference between this and other um, opportunities like this is that you are not yes you're not if you're not it's doing the, the work yourself no so, so you are, you are a business owner and you are outsourcing it to people who do the do yes and that's different. territory by a postcoded area so i've been speaking to somebody today and she's now bought our west london territory so she lives in richmond she's brought q richmond up to central London, she will go networking, she will build those relationships with clients, and then she'll identify what support they need. And then she matches the, the clients to our pool of experts. So she'll be really delving deep. And, and that's a big skill to have, you know, are you interested in people? A bit like the recruitment piece where you're really understanding what someone needs and then coming up with a solution. So um, it's lovely and scalable. And it means for Louisa, who's launching with me, she doesn't have to get bogged down in doing the client delivery. She can if she wants to do elements of it. And I'll often say that as well. If perhaps marketing's your thing, you, you get a client that wants marketing support, you can then do that and get the full margin on that. But ultimately, you can continually scale and grow and take on more clients, which is exciting. Which is really exciting. OK, so we've had another comment from... An anonymous Facebook user um, would love to set up my own business after building a career in the city, but really struggle with a viable business idea. But mostly the thought and fear of ensuring an income. I'm the main earner and not in a position to be without a regular income. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say to that, that's a very real fear. And the first you've got two points there. The first is not knowing that you've got a viable business idea. And obviously we, you need to have a, some idea of what you want to do. And then the second part of that is not being in a position to be without a regular income. And I think that's where lots of people like you um, 
start side hustles. I hate that word, but you know, that phrase side hustle. Yeah. So you have something that you're good at that you can then, yeah, flex yes. up. So you, so you run your, so you continue on with your paid work and in as much as you can in your time outside work, you start to slowly build on, you know, a project or, you know, the business idea. And you do that for as long as that takes in your own time while you're being paid until you reach a point where you feel like it is viable and you can earn money from it or you even start earning money from it and see how that goes before you give up. And so some people, what they do is they start cutting back on their full time employment and maybe going four days or three days a week to allow them more time to focus on the other business. So I think that's a really common problem. I think that the key is finding the, the something that it is that you really want to do. Um, and I'd say with these things, it doesn't always have to be the new and the shiniest idea. You just have to do it better than you know someone else or bring something added that others aren't doing or do it better in some way. And then um, we've got another. Do you want to add anything to that, Rebecca? No, no, I, I totally agree. And I think it's I see that a lot. And I, we see that with clients as well that perhaps use outsourcing to give them that additional support to start growing their business while they're concentrating on their main one as well. So don't yeah. really have to do all of that. I'm, I'm not plugging outsourcing for us. I'm just saying that's what that is. That is a solution that then enables you to grow something. Exactly. So then we've got another one. I have an idea for a business, have been to a few workshops for new entrepreneurs, explored funding, but haven't written a business plan. What was the first big leap you took after you had the clear idea and did your research? Um, yeah, so that was writing, deciding how I wanted the business to be structured. And it's interesting, I've never followed everyone else. So I think I would say to Anonymous, you know, do what you feel is right and natural look at some of the competitors, but don't get taken over by that either, because actually you've just got to get out there and start testing it. And it's, you, I remember a friend of mine spent hours making her templates and things look really nice before she actually got a client. You know, and it's easy for us to get into that comfort blanket thing of thinking, well, I, I want to make everything look all right, but actually it's probably best just to start talking and, and testing the water. I totally agree. And I keep reminding myself on the daily that done is better than perfect. And um, another cliche, but actually you can spend so much time and actually some Sabine has also said, when did you know your business was ready to be launched? Not sure when to put it out there. I'd say you can, you know, you could wait forever and a day to actually launch it. But what do you think? I think that yeah, sometimes you just have to get yeah, out I remember, there. I remember thinking, what are we going to call the business? And my husband and I spent, you know, a few hours doing it. And then I suddenly said, right, yeah, that's it. I'm going to do it. And then it's sort of, then you start just going out there, getting someone to do a quick little logo. You don't have to spend a lot of money on any of this either. And I think I'm quite envious of Canva and things that are around now because they certainly weren't around, were they? When we, oh, yes. Canva Street. Yeah. Is that all those things? Um, I would say also I follow lots of business coaches um, and one of the coaches that I followed at the time was like, people become obsessed with exactly what you just said, like the logo. I can't let launch to have a logo. You spend weeks talking about your logo, and and actually, you can become a millionaire without even having a logo. And that this particular entrepreneur, yeah. business coach, never really had a logo. She was just called Helen. Do you yeah. know Helen Pritchard, Helen Tudor? Now, yeah. yeah, yeah. And her big thing was, you know, if you obsess about small things like a logo, then you'll never, you know. She said, I'm, I've, I, you know, I've got to six figures, and I was just called Helen. And I think it's true. You know, you can become really wrapped up in in your oh, branding no, totally waste a lot of time and actually just crack on don't make it an excuse i think sometimes people hide behind that correct okay well look, i'm really um loving these these questions um so let's just come back to to you rebecca just to to close off in terms of what would you say so for people looking to explore this as an opportunity what sort of person do you think would be right for this? Because I think people question, is this right? What's the right opportunity? So what sort of yeah, of course. So yeah, somebody would be right for this for, um, your, for your opportunity. Yes. Yeah, so somebody often say with entrepreneurial spirit, so someone that's keen to develop something for themselves because I'm not restricting anyone. I want them to run their own business, obviously with our systems and guidelines, but make it their own. So somebody that feels that this would be something that they would really enjoy that would fit with what they're doing that they can scale so somebody that's just yeah 
keen to have something for themselves, but also like elements of meeting people, being part of a community and making a difference. And I've um, published a book, which Katie's bored of now, this one, and I've sent it actually to a number of people. You haven't sent it to me. Well, I haven't sent it to you, no, you'd be bored. But this book is proving to be quite useful for anyone that's got a vague interest, and I'm more than happy to pop it in the post as well. I seem to be a regular at the post office over the last couple of weeks, but I know it's making a difference for people, and it's also got some um, sort of mentoring style questions in it, irrespective of whether you're interested ultimately in us, but, but about where you are in your journey and sort of just giving you a few little challenges. So um, that's definitely worth thinking about. Definitely. Okay, so has anyone got any specific questions for Rebecca about Get Ahead and the Get Ahead opportunity? Because Rebecca's here and happy to answer any questions. Due to my technical failures we've run quite over tonight um but i feel like we've covered a lot we've covered a lot about yeah, a setting lot. up our businesses we've covered quite a lot about get ahead and the opportunity we haven't covered the investment do you want to cover that a little bit or do you want yes, to I do contact yeah. you yeah so it's eight thousand pounds for a five-year license and i'll often say the cost of a takeaway coffee but it can be payable through a startup loan so you can apply for those that then is monthly fee and i would just say don't get hung up on it eight thousand pounds it seems a lot when actually you break it down like katie said you would spend that in a heartbeat setting up your own business doing a website and all of those things you have to do before you can even open the door so it's gives the, we always describe it as a business in a box so it's an opportunity to really make something of your own and also to be that value of being part of the community with mentoring linkedin training and all sorts of things so it's certainly something that can grow and I've been delighted to see the progress that um, my partners are making and I hate that you can make six figures but you can and it's also an amazing opportunity to feel that you're making a difference to other people which ultimately I think is in so just put that in perspective a little bit because I think you're right people don't get hung up on the, the eight grand because ultimately setting up a business in terms of building the website and all the things that you need to you know subscribe to and the payment platforms and all the th various things that I was doing and actually for somebody to say, actually, Katie, here's the website, here's this, here's that, you know, here's all the learnings, here's the support, here's how you do it is invaluable. So I think that... Yes, no, that. absolutely. And if I, you know, I have a financial model that I share and actually the, the cost of running this as a regional partner is minimal in the sense of your only outgoings once you've paid for the franchise fee is actually then going to networking, buying a few coffees, you know, you can actually run it on fairly tight budget. As, it, as with anything, there's 10% turnover comes back to us in return for mentoring, the marketing plan, and all those things that you don't have to think about. So I'm just interested in seeing some of my partners running this alongside, um, Sarah's also a business coach, and, and this is compatible with her growing that side mm -hmm. of her business as well. So it can be done in part-time hours. I know Sabine and I were talking last week about, you know, it can be done. I, I never wanted to work outside my kids school time and that's been a, a real value of mine as well I, but other, I get other people like working in the evening so it's it's got that flexibility all round I guess so we've got a question would the loan if you've got a business loan be spread over the five years with interest I'm not sure that you can yeah, answer so that. Start -up, government startup loan is done like that absolutely and then we also have connections with some of the banks that do a similar thing so it's so I yeah, suspect it's, Rebecca's quite a, um, used to these conversations and will help whoever. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So she won't just take your money and run. She'll uh, help yeah, you work. And we're part of an ethical, we're part of the British Franchise Association. So we wouldn't be part of that if we weren't ethical. And I'm also a qualified professional with them and a franchise consultant. So I work with brands to help them scale. So, yeah. I'm not that awful franchisor or what people think of as an awful franchisor that takes the cash and you never hear from again. I'm afraid I'm quite the opposite. I'm very much here and I love it. And I, the mentoring side is lovely for me because it's a privilege to see people grow and develop businesses that they deserve. And I love working with you. And we've had recently a lady who joined. When did she join? When did she start? How she did? Um, she officially yeah. launched in September. So she heard a live of ours last spring. And she's awesome. She's amazing. So she's running. And that's out. how it happens, guys. I mean, that is how it happens, isn't it? We don't we do these because we want, I mean, for me, I do this with Rebecca because I'm really passionate about helping people to not just set up on their own, but find what it is that, you know, is going to ignite them and give them the flexibility that they need. And this is such a tremendous opportunity. And I've seen people 
from our world, from our community, join Rebecca and become part of the Get Ahead family and flourish. And so, you know, if we can help to bring any more, you know, people into the Get Ahead family and to change your lives and to help you set up a business and to give you that wonderful flexibility that you need with the support, then that makes me very happy too. So um, we haven't got any more questions. We've run over, we've still got people online. If you want to contact Rebecca, you can contact her directly through the thread on this event page. Um, how you tell people how they can get yes, in touch? Also on LinkedIn, also on Facebook. Yeah. And we're a flexible working people partner, so I've got a, a page on Katie's website as well. So uh, and there too. Yes. So thank you. All right. Well, thank you for bearing with us, everybody who has hung on and listened, and for anyone watching on replay. I hope you got some good insights and value out of this session. Rebecca, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm really sorry oh, about the, the technical no problem. No problem. Um, so um, please do get in touch with Rebecca if you're interested in chatting to her a bit more. And thank you so much for listening and have a good rest of your evening. Thank you. Take care. Bye.